Now see this colonoscopy picture, what you can see here, you can see that the colonic mucosa is edematous and simultaneously what else you can find that there is presence of pseudomembrane. So there is inflammation of colon with presence of pseudomembrane. So what's the name of this condition? This is pseudomembranous colitis. So what's the name of this condition? This is known as pseudomembranous colitis, right? Very, very important topic asked in pharma, asked in micro medicine surgery. So, you must be knowing it is caused by Clostridium difficile, which is a gram positive bacillus. So, organism responsible, it is caused by Clostridium difficile. Clear? And you know, this Clostridium difficile induced colitis is the leading cause of nosocomially acquired diarrhea. So, this is Clostridium difficile induced colitis, which is the leading cause. Is the leading cause of nosocomially acquired, means hospital acquired, nosocomially acquired diarrhea. Simple. Now, see the pathogenesis of pseudomembranous colitis. Whenever we are giving antibiotics, there is depletion of normal commensal flora. So, this normal commensal flora which is located in the colon, if there is depletion, there is overgrowth of what? Clostridium difficile. And this Clostridium difficile is going to produce the toxins. There are two toxins, toxins A and toxins B. And what is the spectrum of disease? It can lead to watery diarrhea to the fulminant pseudomembranous colitis. So, see what is the pathogenesis? So, here the pathogenesis is related to use of antibiotics, clear? One antibiotic which is commonly used in exam that is clindamycin. So, whenever we are using antibiotics, because of antibiotics, there is depletion of normal commensal flora. So, what happens? There is depletion. And if there is depletion of this normal commensal flora, there is overgrowth of Clostridium difficile. So, because of this, there is overgrowth. And this overgrowth of Clostridium difficile, it is going to produce what? The toxins. Clear? So, there are two toxins, toxin A and toxin B. Toxin A acts like enterotoxin and toxin B acts like cytotoxin. So, what are the toxins produced? Toxins A and B. So, this A is enterotoxin, right? And the B is cytotoxin. Okay. So, what is the spectrum of disease? These toxins can lead to only watery diarrhea and it can lead to life-threatening fulminant colitis also. So, see the clinical features. So, in these patients, we can have spectrum of disease ranging for, from watery diarrhea to life-threatening fulminant colitis. Life-threatening fulminant colitis. Simple. Now, how we are going to make the diagnosis? So, in these cases, we can make the diagnosis by detection of one or both of these toxins. And what is the gold standard investigation for diagnosis? It is the stool cytotoxin assay. We can go for ELISA also, which is sensitive and specific. But the gold standard test is stool cytotoxin assay. Okay. So, see the diagnosis. Diagnosis can be made by detection of one or both toxins. What's the gold standard? And it's the stool cytotoxin assay. Clear? We can go for ELISA also, which is highly sensitive and specific. Now, usually we are not going for colonoscopy, but suppose it is done. What you are going to find? You are going to find the pseudomembrane. There are ulcers plaques so there are signs of inflammation so on colonoscopy
देर आर अल्सर्स प्लाक्स एंड सूडोमेम्ब्रेन क्लियर सो सिंस देर इज सूडोमेम्ब्रेन इन द कोलॉन दिस इज नोन एज सूडोमेम्ब्रेनस कोलाइटिस ओके on cct there is a typical sign and that's known as accordion sign this question was asked many times in the form of image based question see how it looks like so here you can see edema as well as pseudo membrane so you can see what edema and pseudo membrane and can you see the appearance it is looking like accordion that's why it is known as accordion sign so on cct on cct in pseudo membranous colitis there is accordion sign so this is known as accordion sign clear now how we are going to treat we discussed in pathogenesis that there is antibiotic which is responsible for depletion of commensal flora normal commensal flora and overgrowth of clostridium difficile so immediately we have to stop that offending agent or offending antibiotic so see the steps of management first stop the antibiotic so we have to stop the antibiotic okay now the treatment depends whether the patient is having mild disease or patient is having severe disease so see if the patient is having only mild disease in these cases what is the drug of choice in these cases the drug of choice is oral metronidazole what oral metronidazole and what is the second choice is the oral vancomycin so here the drug of choice you have to remember it's oral metronidazole simple and what is the second line agent the second line agent it's the oral vancomycin okay now see if the patient is having severe disease in this case we have to give bowel rest we have to give iv hydration and at the place of oral metronidazole what iv metronidazole is given so severe disease if the patient is having severe disease we have to go for bowel rest iv fluids for hydration so iv hydration and here we have to give iv metronidazole iv metronidazole and here also the second line agent is what oral vancomycin so this is how we are going to manage there is a new agent used in clostridium difficile induced diarrhea and that is fidaxomycin fidaxomycin clear so this fidaxomycin is a new drug it is used for diarrhea caused by clostridium difficile so it is used in the patients having diarrhea which is caused by clostridium difficile clear so pseudo membranous colitis is very very important topic and these are the important questions related to pseudo membranous colitis Thank you.